Welcome to OM Report by Andre Alpa, your interview-focused podcast on topics from online marketing to internet startups. Well, today's OM Report is with Matt. Matt, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, Matt Cullen. I uh, work at Vistaprint out of the Boston area. I am on their uh, organic search team and I've been with the company since March uh, and before that I was uh, in-house for a big educational travel company out of Cambridge and then before that I was with uh, an agency that had a a lot of huge clients in the Fortune 500 space. Okay, so you moved kind of from the agency side to the in-house yep. side. Uh, so what was the biggest challenge when moving in-house? How is that different from your agency time? Um, now you're having to deal with, you know, the processes of getting stuff implemented yourself. Right. Bef well, before, when you were at the agency, you gave them recommendations and then, you know, you let them take care of it. But now in the in-house, you have to deal with, you know, creative, you have to deal with uh, brand, legal, and then the web dev, dev hours to get things implemented. Right, so, so you have to justify whether something is worth it or yeah. more worth it or more important or less important than exactly. you ever wanted. It, you know, and they, and, and they want a dollar amount. They want to know, uh, is this change going to make us this much money or how, things like that. Isn't that very hard to guess for most, it is, most it, technical it, it is. things? But the, the good thing is, uh, you know, our company has a history, so we, we know if you make significant changes to a particular page that are not search friendly, um, then we can say, well, that cost us some. Yeah, so much I mean, so if, if you guys go through with this new design, we might not rank three anymore. We might be off the first page, and we can tie a dollar amount to that. Okay. So th those are one of the. That's kind of the more like the defensive approach, right? If if they change something to a negative, but let's say you want to, I don't know, add something to the page that was kind of like, you know, when when is. A, a defense situation against you know uh, something that is good already but some but it's I think it's a different situation when you want to try something new to get to a next level and then to be able to guess that where you don't have numbers yet that's that, true okay and that, like well in that's case it's probably harder to put like a dollar amount on it it right? is but those are the most exciting parts of being in-house because you can you know create a strategy and then you can present it to the you know the the people that you know are the ones that are making the decisions and then you can let them know you can educate them on all the new algorithm changes and what we need to do going forward so we have to let them know that the old way is not going to work for long it might be working right now but you know in three or four months it might not be working right. so and they understand that I mean that's why they hire us we're the experts so uh, as long as we put together you know a solid presentation and um, we can tell them that hey this is going to help us in the long term yeah. you know we're not going to see it right now but you know the changes we make today could help us for the next two or three years. Right. Vistaprint is a super international company, right? Yeah, we're. Um, uh, are you serving? Uh, I don't know the exact <laughs> amount, but we are all over. Yeah. So how do you steer? I mean, how do you make sure that everybody's kind of? How do you make sure everybody does the right thing? Well, that's we're is we're it? very close with our, um, our 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 EU team and our Australian and J Japan team. And it's great because we're able to educate them whereas you know, they might be doing PPC, social, and SEO for um, their locale. Right. And they might not know as much as, as we do about SEO because we're specialized in our office. So it's, it's great for educating. So it's like a know-how center and then you yeah. spread the know-how and, and subsidiaries. And, and, and kind of when we do make changes, we want to make them globally. We don't want to just do one-offs and change something on uh, US and Canada and then have the EU sites uh, still on an old design, still using old tactics that don't work. So we like to uh, take a global approach and we're moving more towards that every every month right right it's so, so important so is there is your experience that things can be set up set up and do you do but it probably would make sense so, so two questions I came up with so one is that probably it would make sense to first test one country and then you know do the rollout later because maybe something you figured out doesn't work as it should those are tactics that you know um, I know I know a lot of uh, e-commerce companies have done stuff like that and you know it, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's, sometimes you do that. You, you take one smaller company, you try out the tactics, and whether it be PPC, SEO, 
um, you know, you, you try a new design of a certain page, a product page, checkout process, and you know, you look at the, you do split testing, you see if the changes worked, and if the changes worked, let's send it out globally. Let's see how, let's see how it does. But that's one of the benefits of being, um, uh, you, you know, global. So you, you, you can afford to, to, to do these tests without having to affect your major dot com uh, domain. Right. Yeah. So how internationalizable are things? I mean, you know, the characters in the different countries, they differ to a certain degree. So I wonder, That's what, what's your guts feeling? You know, can every, will, will everything work the same in every country? Like, because conversion optimization, I think it strongly differs. There's countries who are like super open to giving an email address. Others are willing to fill yes. the whole form. Others are super defensive on that. So where do you get that variation? In? Because that's so hard to figure out, right? Yeah, it goes so uh, it goes so far beyond just uh, submitting text and copy for translation, because people search differently in every country. Right. Um, you know, we need to. We can't just dump things into Google Translate. People. Uh, you know, there'll be completely different words for the same products in other countries, and you know, we just have to make sure we have the best translation teams there, and they have to let us know, uh, you know, their keyword research, right. because that's why we have SEOs in these other countries because we can't be responsible. We know what works in the U.S., but that doesn't mean they're going to work over there. Right. I mean, I worked for, um, I worked on Huggies uh, many years ago, okay. and over in the U.K., they call them what do they call them. They don't call them diapers, they call them nappies. They call them nappies. That's cute. So, you know, you can't just go in to UK with your with your USA approach because their, you know, nappies has a higher search volume than some of these more standard terms that the US customers are searching for. Is there other things that you remember from your time working for that or other clients that differ from the UK and the US? Like besides just the, the pure keywords when it comes to, well, I don't know, other things that, that br happen? Brands altogether. Um, like Ariel, I think, was a, uh, a dish, some sort of dishwashing or yeah. some sort of uh, cleaning product. And you know, Ariel did not even exist in the USA. So we had to have uni unique campaigns for Ariel altogether. Whereas certain things like Tide and uh, other major brands, you know, they cross over into all the countries, but certain countries have specific brands, you know, with Procter and Gamble or Kimberly Clark, uh, you know, and and the, those bands, brands have been around for so long that the you know they can't drop it and tie it into the the USA equivalent. It's just not going to work because they have such a, a footprint in the supermarkets. Right. Would would content marketing or like, uh, like content creation or, or off-page optimization would that differ in the different countries, or is that are those approaches internationalizable from your point of view? Uh, and I, I from what I've seen is. You know, different country, different countries are more accept are more accepting of um, you know link outreach and you know guest blogging, which people are getting away from now. But yeah, I've seen I've seen that over the years that it's it's very different when you're trying to acquire and market to to other countries. Yeah, can you That's why you need uh, you need teams on lo on location. You can't do everything out of the USA office. Right. Is there probably something that always you know pops up on your mind with, with, that was a kind of a unique thing for you that came up in one country that you thought, wow, that's different, that you could probably share? Yeah, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that, I mean, I know the differences with, with, with you know, diapers and Ariel, those really stick out. Um, I can't really think of anything other than those or, or stuff that I can speak of in Vistaprint right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's just, there, there, there are constant challenges. Right. And what's great is having the teams in, in local locale. So we're video com conferencing with them constantly and we're sharing our tactics right. and figuring out ways that they can implement it on their end. How are your experiences with Adrift flying in general? Um, well, have you, have you been able to experiment with that already? Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you, serving country codes, we have so many different countries that we serve, so we just need to. Also, several countries that share the same language, right? That, yes. That's like the other. Yes, it's like other. it's you know Canada. There's UK. So yeah, I mean, we just try to do the best practices that Google wants. Right. And but did you see them like really taking effect? Because my my. Ex my observations so far are that sometimes it seems like a rather weak signal 
It is. And it's, and it's not as strong as one would hope it is. It, yeah, it is. So it, I hope they're going to tighten up that a, but a few notches up. The thing is, Google's getting um, uh, so much smarter when it comes to that, that y even if you don't have the, uh, the href lang tag, they're on top of it. You yeah. know, they're, whereas before, if you didn't have those tags and you had <clears throat> different countries with similar content that were in the same language, you can get dinged for that. But now they realize, you know, your co.uk and your .com might have the same content. You might not have an href lang tag in there, but they understand that it's the best customer experience. And that's what it comes down to, is the customer experience. Where, as long as you're not trying to deceive and you're not trying to be evil, then you know, usually they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Right. Yeah, especially, right. I think it helps with bigger corporations too. You know, if you... Because they are a huge brand themselves already. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you already have a footprint in a certain country, and then if you have a footprint in another country, then, you know, they'll understand that, yeah, the content, content's going to be similar, but, you know, they're serving a different audience. Right. So, right. so you men mentioned you, you've been working in the education space before, right? Did I get that? The educational space? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done some uh, educational seminars at no, no, I, I, like What was the, the job you did before? Uh, oh, oh I, I worked um, uh, educational travel okay. for uh, okay. EF educational. Oh, okay, okay. Do they do these like kind of language travel things? Yeah, they they specialize in sending you know high school groups. You know, a teacher will will get her a class of twenty people to That's to go. Also quite an international company because I know oh, yeah. it is in Germany too. I think EF has over thirty thousand employees. Wow. Uh, worldwide. So because yeah. they have they have language schools, right. they have the travel programs, and then they have the tour directors and twenty four hour support in each place that we travel and I think I mean I'm just throwing this number out there I think we have over or we uh, they have over 350 tours right yeah right. so that means they have presence all over the country so how was that all that, over the world that, that was also quite an international setup but uh, yeah that was the, like, just the US or like the whole team the whole international team uh, what was your, your my your role, role in, in my role I was I was responsible for uh, uh, multiple websites because we have um, EF college study tours we had EF tours which was the high school um, we had one for Girl Scouts and then also we had a, a Canada so like different site. brands in the US were yep the US. different brands so how what, what was special about that kind of we had to, to work on that kind of topic because it's something it's where I would think you, it's it's really easy to get links. You just go to all the schools. That it's not that easy, to, and then they'll be happy to link, and you give them I don't know. The the thing is that um, the majority of, of their business was it was high school, and the high schools aren't going to have the .edu links um, as as much as the colleges are. Right. You know, but the high schools are still still the website, and there's a lot of them. There's just like, like huge potential. Yeah, there are. Tap in. There is, and uh, you know the thing is that a, a teacher might have a trip that they run every year, but the school doesn't want links back to EF. Okay. because there are other companies that do it and there could be other teachers in that school that are traveling with other companies so right. you know it's so, kind of so a push yeah, and they, they would if it, if they were doing it they would probably link to every of the vendors yeah they could yeah. they could do that yeah right but um and, and one of the issues w at EF was uh, cannibalization because uh, they have of the different brands that target yeah the exactly we had um, uh, EF college study tours which was more educational focused but then we also had EF college break which was more That's let's just go on a fun trip distinguish. yeah like even for for you for, like, I mean, the names are so close, so similar. I know. I understand from a marketing perspective, you could say, okay, I'm going to have this main brand and these sub brands. But then again, when you go for search terms, how yeah. do you, how do they differ? They probably overlap like 90%. Yeah, it, it was easy in print. I mean, you're sending books out to schools, and you can clearly see one's just for fun, right. and one's educational experience, you know, possible credits or whatever. Um, but the problem how do is you translate that to SEO. That's that was that was the biggest push and pull because each one wanted to be first for college travel, <laughs> for educate you know, college you know educational travel university. Like the smartest thing to have like one main brand that you work with, and then once people land, then you show them like in print. Okay, what are you exactly looking for, and then distribute from there. Yeah, I mean they they did that with um with PPC. Right. It's much easier that that way because they click on an ad and it's like oh okay which one are you looking for, and then you go there. So similar to SEO when it comes, I mean just a keyword strategy. Yeah, I, similar. 
yeah, or the, like the landing pages. But on the other hand, I mean, on the one hand is, you know, you have some pages that distribute. On the other hand, you could say, wow, you have five domains, so you can take, you know, more of the equity of the 10 organic results that mm -hmm. are there. So, so how, did, how did it work out? How do you make it a happy end? Uh, well, uh, I haven't been there for, you know, you know, over like, about a year now, right. but with with um, Hummingbird coming out, uh, maybe that will help them out. You know, when people are actually using conversational search terms, I think that could help lead them into the right direction. You know, if it's going to be educational travel or if it's going to be you know college break travel, you know, those college terms, if they if they ask two or three questions in a row mm -hmm. to Google, maybe they're going to end up at the one that we want them to end at, up at, what, what EF wants them to end up at. But, but you couldn't convince them. So, so so it was hard. Were for, you pushing for like a, a strategy where you go with all domains for the keywords and then just see what it happens first, or were you pushing for a strategy where you have like, let's say, an acc accumulating landing page that then distributes among the different brands? Yeah, I what mean, was your kind of favorite, the, uh, whatever the company did. I, I, I guess one could look up what the company did because I could just. Yeah, you can you can did. see. I mean, you can go to search for EF Tours or just yeah. EF.com and you can see the different properties. Right. Yeah, but the thing is. They ha they've had these properties for so long, and, and you know I haven't so been there. So so may maybe they are in process of, of consolidating into one strong domain just on EF, and then having subfolder. That's that's w was one of the things that I thought would be cool. You know you have EF.com slash college travel or right. college study or you know whatever whatever it is Girl Scouts. And then when the keywords are slightly indifferent, then you could distribute from there like you would yeah. have in a. It would be much easier if they're all in the same domain. Yeah. I mean, these changes uh, would take so long to implement, you know, based on the CMS that they have and everyone that needs to approve it. Sure. But I think in the long term, that that could be a big win. Right. I, I, you, you'd see a dip at the beginning because yeah. people might have a hard time following or it. A huge kick. Yeah. Um, possibly. Yeah. Because if you bring the link equity of all yeah. them together in one domain, probably it gives a huge lift. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Also sometimes it takes a long time for the 301s to, to kick over, but I think in the long term that could work out for them. Yeah, probably it was not so easy to, to, to resemble on the website the organizational structure that a company might have. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's easier to steer on different domains that are, there's different responsibilities. And in that case, probably. It probably yeah it makes it less attractive for the organization even though from an SS, SEO perspective it would be yeah better. yeah it's a very competitive space so you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by making uh, a knee jerk reaction and you know you know either emulating a competitor or starting something totally new yeah especially during you know peak seasons so it's it's all about timing right yeah all right thanks so much for the interview hey thanks for having me it was fun thanks. OM Report and Andre Alpa would like to thank you for your attention. You can get more episodes on www.omreport.com.